Welcome to All Steelers Talk, your home for everything Pittsburgh Steelers, presented by AllSteelers.com. What is up, Steelers Nation? Thank you so much for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. I'm Noah Strackbine, joined every Tuesday and Thursday by my main man, Donnie Droon. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk or anywhere you get your podcasts. And today, we're talking about the crazy, inconsistently annoying ratings of Madden. We could even say over the years, but especially in 2023. You think the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be fun to play with in Madden 23? You're dead wrong. You're dead wrong. And it starts off with TJ Watt, obviously. We'll dig into all that first. Donnie, it's a beautiful day in the bird, my friend. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, Me and the wife got a trip to Las Vegas this weekend, so super excited for that. Uh, High-key pumped. So it's kind of like what's been keeping me going the, the last, like, five months. Yeah, it's kind of nuts that you're always in Vegas because it's, like, basically a trip to Philly from here, I guess. Just still annoying, but still. Let me ask this. Somebody brought this up to me over the weekend. I was at a bonfire in the neighborhood. Somebody goes, yeah, I heard all sports writers are uh, degenerate gamblers. So here's my question to you. How much money are you going to lose this weekend? (laughs) Sports gambling or just in general? No, in general. Definitely Um, in general. I I am known to do okay at the craps table. Oh, you're Um, a craps man. I am. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. What is nothing? Go ahead. I got nothing. Go ahead. Oh. I muted you. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, I saw. Yeah, I, got I hit the wrong one. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You're cool. All right, um, so craps, man. Go ahead. Yeah, no, cra- craps was fun. Um, I think it's probably the most exciting game, and for whatever reason, I feel like I have more control over the outcome, even though I really don't. It's just the fact that I'm able to throw dice. I've always made other people a lot of money throwing dice in Vegas, so I guess that's why I like it because like people like buy me drinks after and stuff too. That's beautiful. Um, I've seen my uh, father-in-law win significant amounts of money also doing it, taking that money and going to the roulette table and putting it all on black and instantly doubling that money too. Doubling the money? Dude's a madman. Yeah, basically. Wow. Yeah. Wild. That's wild. It's extremely crazy. I, I, don't, I don't really know. I understand roulette. I don't really play it. Um, I'm terrible at blackjack. I am 1,000% terrible at blackjack I'll, I'll never be caught playing blackjack at a casino um other than that like i, I like to play texas hold'em like with friends but like i'll, I'll never spend my actual no, hard-earned money doing that at a casino no not um, a chance. sports gambling for sure I'd, i'll lose some money on that i might try to play some features um at whatever casino we're at but now barcelona is actually playing that's the reason we're going oh so you'll lose some money on the soccer game that's beautiful that's beautiful. Yeah, my uh, best worst gambling story was Atlantic City. Nothing crazy. Uh, I won like a thousand dollars in the matter of like two hours at a blackjack table. It was beautiful, and it was like twelve thirty at night. And by two two forty five in the morning, I was like, I I was dead broke to the point where I had no money to tip the valet the next morning. That's how dead broke I was. All on roulette. All on roulette. There was. Somebody was telling me to toss it on black, and I kept tossing it on black. Still ended up going home with a pulled pork sandwich, but it was a good night. You see, good night. what I hate the most is at the roulette tables, whenever they display, um, like, the most recent, like, numbers and, like, colors that it hit. Yep. My dumbass, me and my wife were leaving the last, like, couple times or whatever. I'm walking past this roulette table. It hit red seven times in a row. Oh. And I'm like, there. I'm like, there's no way that hits red for an eighth time. I'm like, there's oh, no way. Did. Walk over there, put a hundred on black, lost a hundred on black. <laughs> I, was, I, was tell- I, I was telling Haley, I'm just like, yo, like, th- like, tell me the odds of it hitting red eight times in a row. And she's like, well, the odds of it being red or black each time are about fifty percent, and they're all individual <laughs> events. So, congrats. So I'm like, all right. Uh, when that's right as always mean of her. anytime that you're going logic that's very mean there's no need for that shout out Haley no need shout for out that. to Haley 
All right, let's talk some Pittsburgh Steelers football or some virtual football. The Madden ratings have been coming out slowly and surely. We got a lot of the defense, the wide receivers, obviously. The big news, which I feel like is big news every year at this point. I feel like every year we have the same conversation. It's nothing TJ Watt, TJ Watt disrespected again for like the fourth year in a row. Wins yep. defensive player of the year, ties the NFL sa- single season sack record, has the lowest Madden rating of a defensive player in the year of the year in the last five or six years, I believe. I saw that somewhere. And here it is, ninety six overall. Followed are behind Miles Garrett, who's a ninety nine. Nick Bosa follows with a ninety four, and so on and so forth. I don't even know if I have to ask a question. You're looking at this, not Miles Garrett's a 99, TJ Watts a 96. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm going to try to be as um, even kill and as objective as I can. Miles Garrett is a very good player. Miles Garrett is a phenomenal elite NFL defensive player. We have not been on the planet in the last couple of years where TJ Watt is not a better football player than Miles Garrett. Yeah, Especially yeah. whenever you take into consideration, like you said, he tied the NFL sack record basically without those, without a full schedule because he was hurt for a few games. He won NFL Defensive Player of the Year after being passed up not once but twice. Has long been considered one of the best defensive players in the NFL, let alone at his position. But for whatever reason, the the people over at Electronic Arts believe that Miles Garrett is the best edge rusher in football. I know it's been a conversation for a really long time, and I know Browns fans especially love to always bring up the, the Miles Garrett versus T.J. Watt debate. I don't know. I, for my money, T.J. Watt does a hell of a lot more. And even even though like Watt is dropped in the coverage and Miles Garrett really isn't, at least as much as Watt is, how does T.J. Watt still have better numbers getting to the quarterback? That's and right. the, the right. funny part is, sorry, I'll, I'll let you get going here in a minute. People around the league love to say T.J. Watt sacks, or at least a lot of them, come from just effort and like he he doesn't necessarily see the double or the triple teams that a guy like Aaron Donald or that a guy like Miles Garrett has I don't think anybody watches the Pittsburgh Steelers play football because I see TJ Watt get held by double teams on almost a daily uh not daily on almost a play-by-play basis Yep. It's wild. It, it, it is wild. The depths that offensive tackles will go to to basically tackle TJ Watt down to the ground. Sorry. And no, you're cool. Basically tackle him down to the ground and not let him get to the quarterback. And you, you factor all that, and he still almost broke the NFL sack record. Wild. the NFL sack record. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. And the you're, you're pretty much dead on with everything. Like, the strength thing is – I don't know. TJ Watt seems pretty freaking strong to me, and I get it. It's an effort thing, but whatever. Here's my question. Here's my question. Why does Madden believe that TJ Watt could kick the football so well? Dude, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the super high leg kick that he does oh, for his like, celebration? Be. Maybe. Could be. Could be. I don't know. So, TJ Watt, Miles Garrett. Yeah, that's weird. Why things, is that like that? Right? I was looking right at it. Just like, <laughs> that doesn't make that any sense to me whatsoever when it comes to tj watt it's just it's exactly what you said it's the inability to stand out in a number of ways that miles garrett stands out so miles garrett stands out when you look at him you know what i mean tj watt looks like a very athletic built dude no doubt but he's no miles garrett you look at miles garrett you look at tj watt you're clearly going to be like wow miles garrett looks ridiculous I hear time and time again that Miles Garrett is just the prototypical dominant pass rusher, that he is just built like a goddess, 
and he has our and he has godlike physical attributes, it's natural talent, whatever. I'm tired of it. At this point, TJ Watt is proven to be the best edge rusher in football. I think a lot of people are finally giving him his respect. I don't like people, especially tackles that that come out and say, oh, well, TJ's easier to play against than Miles Garrett. I mean, like, if that's the case, then you're just coming up, okay, well, TJ's easier to play against because at some point he gets tired. Maybe not every single play he's going to get to the quarterback. You know, Miles Garrett, you have to use all all sorts of, of skill sets to stop. Well, TJ averages about a sack a game. So at least once a game, TJ Watt's getting the better of you to the point where it's impacting the game. So maybe he is easier to block, but nobody seems to have shown that. You know what I mean? That's where I get – that's where I think this entire conversation gets lost. Is like everybody wants to label TJ Watt as just like a better Nick Bosa and Miles Garrett's just like this, oh, my God, he was born to be exactly here. Well – he doesn't play like it, and I think at some point you have to talk about that. Yeah, like Miles Garrett was almost engineered in like a lab to play football. Like, like he is a phenomenal physical specimen. While TJ quite isn't on that like level, um, I feel like TJ Watt has given more offensive linemen a run for their money than Miles Garrett has the last few years. And that is not a slap in the face to Miles Garrett. Like I said earlier, like Garrett's a phenomenal defensive player. And yeah, like he he has player. been, he will continue to be. Um it sucks playing him twice a year. Especially with the line that the Steelers have now. But I don't know. I'd like just an overall complete defensive player, let alone getting to the quarterback. I understand Garrett's probably a little bit more in the trenches, but like as in like as in legit outside linebacker who is basically like pretty much only on the outside whereas like miles garrett will sometimes you know be allowed to move to the interior based on what the browns want to do you're facing the best of the best whenever it comes to protecting the quarterback like like you you are going against guys who will feed their families for the rest of their lives making sure you do not get to the quarterback yep Nobody gets but, better than TJ. But let, let alone, let alone being chipped by tight ends. Let alone being double teamed by a tight end or an offensive tackle. Um, and just like have like last year, whenever Stefan Tuit went out, even more pressure was put on TJ. Yeah, because because Stefan Tuit being the phenomenal pass rusher he is, that presence is now gone. You're not really worried about anything on the interior. Then you could really focus on the outside. Yeah, and it, it, it's not like T.J. White has this phenomenal pass rushing presence on the opposite side of him. I mean, Alex Highsmith has showed steady improvement in the first couple of years in the league, um, but even whenever like Bud Dupree was like opposite of him, like T.J. was still getting a lot of attention. Yeah, T.J. And still producing numbers. Yeah, T.J. Watt has been doing this with literally everybody on his back. Plus, he's fighting injuries. It's I don't know. There's not, there's like no words anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's the same thing. Like, you know, those ridiculous Najee Harris pictures that you see about Madden where he looks like his thighs are the size of this, my, the entire room that oh, I'm yeah. seeing in right now. It's the same people that do like Madden. I don't truly believe that Madden has anything, any knowledge of what's going on at all. I would love to know who the team is that makes these adjustments, make makes these readings. And I understand it's probably an algorithm, but how, like, like nobody's sitting there going, ah, man, I don't know, dude, maybe we should send somebody to Pittsburgh to make sure Najee Harris's thighs aren't the size of a train. Maybe we should uh, watch some TJ Watt film before we just go off of what Taylor Lumen said on whatever podcast or barstool. Didn't he say that on barstool where he was like, the one. yeah, where he was like, I'd rather block miles Garrett or TJ Watt than miles Garrett. And like explained why I guarantee you that's what they went off of. I guarantee you somewhere in the Madden industry, somebody said, Oh, well, you know, the top left tackle in the NFL right now just said this about TJ Watt and miles Garrett. And everybody's like, well, miles Garrett's clearly better. That's what everybody says. 
I would love to know. I would love, 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 love to know. Um, when was the last time you bought Madden? Uh, I told myself I wasn't going to buy it last year, but I did end up buying it. I wanted to use it to stream like Cardinals content whenever uh, I, I cover the Arizona Cardinals out here. Um, so I did that for a couple weeks, and then it, it just became way too hard to kind of like simulate games if you didn't know who was going to be on the injury report until like Sunday. Um, true. <laughs> so I tried to play it a little bit afterwards, and it was just the worst game I've ever played. Like, like if, if you really love football and you have – anything of like a basic understanding of what's supposed to happen madden is the most infuriating game known to man oh, of all time. my worst fear is whenever the ncaa game comes out next year it's going to be just the exact same thing as madden it's just slapped with college uniforms teams logos all of that good stuff i will launch my playstation 5 out the window if that happens yeah ncaa was where it's at that was the move. Yes. By a mile. Like, by a, there was no better game. I'm dropping everything today. I don't understand what's wrong <laughs> with me. Like, my hands aren't working. I couldn't tell you. Um, like, there was no better game. What was it? NCAA 14? That was by mm -hmm. far the best game probably ever made in in all of sports. Besides, like, like the original 2K where you could play in the my player mode, like the my career before they started – adding all this narrative nonsense was also fire. That yep. one was beyond fire. But NCAA was whoo. Yeah, like it, it's crazy how you look at NFL 2K5. Um, and like yeah. th that just had like so much more like immersiveness to the game. And then even like all pro football 2K8 was like a really solid game. That game where like they had just like, a bunch of like NFL legends that yep. didn't have like any like real teams or names, but like they had all the players. Um, that was like a really fun game whenever you compare it to Madden. But like, the unfortunate thing is like Madden knows its main target was just a bunch of people who are willing to spend money in Ultimate Team. And that's where it, everything kind of went downhill from there. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. I, and, like, it'll never end, you know what I mean? But, like, it feels good. It's like, I don't know, I'm not going to toss out names or anything, but it's like not eating or shopping at certain places because you, like, you're like, ah, like, why, you, you know, you should, you're a little aggressive in your thinking or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it, it feels good to be like, well, I'm not going to buy Madden anymore because yeah. it's nonsense. I buy Madden, like, once every five years. And... Then it lasts about five years, and then, like, we hit points now where, like, I'm playing, like, Madden 21, I think, and – or 20, maybe 20. And, like, you get to, like, the – you get to, like, the Micah Parsons draft, and he's, like, subpar. And you're like, well, n n n n no. Yeah. I, want it, I want him to be phenomenal because that's what he is in real life. We hit those things. So, like, there's, like, guys that you don't hear of that are, like, instantly 99s, and you're like – I don't, I don't know who that is. Like, who so. made this draft class? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what are we doing here, man? And yeah, like Aiden Hutchinson was trash in the last draft class that I downloaded. It was just, it was, it gets, it gets annoying. You know what I mean? So you got to update. I'll wait till next year, maybe two years. Yeah. I might just go buy a PS2. For Dude, that, that's usually a good rule, too, like every other year for a video game. So you don't feel like you're shelling out money for the same product. And hopefully within that time span, you're able to, like, get at least a little bit of uh bang for your buck whenever it comes to trying to upgrade your game see like at the same time i can never buy 2k again i don't believe because i don't know like any of the new basketball players well you all. have to buy it now because devin booker's on the cover yeah but like that's the thing is like i wouldn't know like any of the new guys you know like i'd be like but you oh. play it then you get to know the new guys yeah yeah i guess i think the last 2k i have is like 2k19 and I still rock that all the time, actually. It's beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let's get to the rest of the Steelers. Frank, see you the next one. Deontay Johnson was another talked about topic of conversation. Wow, I can't talk today either. 85 overall. He was tied 24th with CD Lamb, Hunter Renfro, and Madden ratings. I'm not upset about this, like, at all. I think it's a pretty fair rating, considering who – was in the top 10 and also considering like who's below him because you see Deontay Johnson, like I like 
that Hunter Renfro is below him because I, I believe that that's how it is in real life. I think CeeDee Lamb has an opportunity to be ridiculous this season. Robert Woods yeah. deserves his respect all the mm-hmm, time. For sure. And guys like Jalen Waddell, Marquise Brown, and Cortland Sutton, and even Tyler Boyd below him, like I feel like that's like a good – like those are really solid players, mm-hmm. but they're not elite. And I think Deontay Johnson fits perfectly in that. This is the only one I'm okay with. Yeah, I think Deontay deserves to be above everybody he currently is. Um, and then you kind of get to like the the CD land, the Robert Woods territory, where it's like, okay, well, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that Deontay is kind of placed on par or below those guys. Um, I, I think he's he's probably right around the company he should be in. Um, did you see where he like commented and he was like bet whenever it came to like the the initial like rankings? I like that. I like I that a lot, but. Now is your time to go and prove it. This is not some grave injustice that the Madden people are doing for Deontay Johnson. We talk about TJ Watt until we're blue in the face about how he needs yeah. to be in the 99 club. And he should probably be the number one rated outside linebacker, pass rusher, whatever you want to call it. DJ has the opportunity to prove a lot of people wrong, including the fine people who judge what your overall rating should be on Madden. Um, his like his speed, his route running, like all that good stuff. None of it was in the top ten. So I mean, like a couple weeks ago, we talked about um, that anonymous NFL executive top ten receiver ranking, and Deontay wasn't even listed as like an honorable mention. Um, but like, it, it, it's very, very evident. A lot of people outside of Pittsburgh don't see Deontay as perhaps the playmaker that some other Steeler fans do and that Deontay Johnson believes himself to do. But like I said, new quarterback, new offense. I mean, 2020 2022, excuse me. I can't talk today either. Um, contract year for him, assuming he doesn't get extended by the end of training camp. It's going to be a big year. going to be a big year. Look, I'm all on Deontay's side that I think he deserves a boatload of money, whatever. Tim. I don't like that he commented on the Madden rating. For one, Madden ratings are stupid, and they're known to be stupid. The only reason Yeah, but that's what we're doing right now, though. Yeah, but that's our job is to talk about stupid <laughs> things. Be we stupid, are not yeah. the players. <laughs> if somebody rated, if somebody was like, here's all the Steelers beat writer ratings, I'd probably be like a 60, and I'd be looking at everybody like, yeah, okay, you're hilarious. Knowing that I'm a 95, okay, but I wouldn't say anything about it. I just move on. I'd just be like, ah, oh, that sucks. You know, like TJ Watts know, bro. We... just like, rawr, I should be a 99. Like, no, he's just like, what? Oh, Madden rate? I, I don't care, man. I don't, yeah. I don't care. And that's how, like, I, he, he's a wide receiver. I get it. I get that part. That they're different people, different types of people. I understand. I just, I agree. And I agree with you. You know, like I agree that this is the contract year. This is the year that he needs to step up. This is the year that everything is on the line and he should be more motivated than ever. And it's a big challenge because a lot of moving pieces. 100% agree with all that. Just, just, just go to work though. You know what I mean? Like say something in the season. So you get disrespected out of the Pro Bowl or something after you put up 1,500 yards. I get that one. Saying something over a Madden rating. It's Madden, bro. It's Madden. Don't go by the game. Easy. Did you see, speaking of Steelers receivers, did you see um, Calvin Austin's speed rating for Madden 23? Is that 95? To put no, we have right here, 95. That is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Here's the rest of Pat Fryman, Chase Claypool, Miller, George Pickens, Miles Boykin. Calvin Austin, Steven Sims, Gunnar Olszewski, and Jace Sternberger. Um, I don't have an issue with any of these outside of Pat Fryermuth, but Calvin Austin being a 95 speed rating is nuts. Have you seen the um, comparisons to him and Deuce McAllister? Somebody saying, I've seen people say, oh, like, you know, should, should the Steelers utilize – Calvin Austin, like the Chiefs did, Deuce, not Deuce McAllister. Dexter McCluster? Dexter McCluster. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> If sure, I mean, he kind of fits that mold as like a special teams gadget 
re- receiver running back mold, but like the Steelers have Najee and the Steelers have a very talented receiving core. I don't really feel like that's necessary. And I feel like if they did kind of put him into that mold, sure, it, it, it'd be fun and like innovative and probably a better way to get him the football. But you're also taking away other opportunities to put the ball in the hands of Pat Firemuth, Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Najee, all of those guys. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, the, there should be no pressure to put Calvin Austin on the field whatsoever this season. It should just be like, if he's good enough, he plays. If not, he plays sometimes. But there's a lot, like, even Zach Entry. I want Zach Entry on the field before I want Calvin Austin on the field. As of right now, that could change in training camp. But Zach Entry looks good. He's a proven veteran, and you could do a lot more with them than you're going to do with Calvin Austin, who's a fourth round rookie. I do like the speed, big fan of the speed. Do you disagree with any of the other ones or like any of the other ones? I don't like Pat um, Fryer at all. I would like to see George Pickens' rating be a little bit higher, but understandably he's a rookie. You don't really know what to expect out of him hitting the next level. Yeah. Um, I feel like Chase Claypool should probably be a couple more overall points higher, but I, I definitely get the the 78 overall. Other than that, like other than – um, I guess the, the biggest gripe, and you already kind of touched on this, would be like Pat Fryermuth in the 79 overall rating. I, I feel like it's a little bit of a slight to him. But, I mean, like I said, like they, they always adjust the uh, the overall ratings in seasons. So plenty of opportunity to change that. Yeah, plenty of opportunity. I just think that Pat put up decent numbers next last year to be, I don't know, somewhere in the 82 to 84 range. I get he's a tight end, so like, eh. My other thing is Jace Sternberger is – I'm pretty sure Zach Entry is a 65. Jace Sternberger is a 66. If you asked Tiny 10 two. Steelers fans who Jace Sternberger is, nine of them would have no idea who he was. And I know that because I stand on the sidelines all the time, and I'm just like, man, who is that guy? And then somebody's like, oh, that's Jace Sternberger. And I'm like, I, who is that guy? You know? He's, see, that's a weird one. Another example, I think, of just – I mean, you can't get upset over Zach Gentry's rating, but another example of how Madden is nothing to be taken seriously. All right, let's jump to the defensive side of the ball. This is the rest of most of the Steelers' ratings. Cam Hayward has yet to be released. I would exp- – what's your, what's your bare minimum on Cam Hayward? I'd what's have your, to look at the rest of the group. Like 89 – Oh, 89. Put up a career year last year. Yeah, but he's also getting just a little bit older. That's why I said I want to see the rest of the defensive tackles in the defensive line to see, like, how exactly they, like, rate those guys. What was his rating last year? Do you know? No, nah, I could look that up, though. I would say. For sure. So while, while you do that, I don't have a problem with really anybody on this list. Um, I, I think – Jack at 82 overall, and Devin Bush at a 77 overall is probably right. Um, Ogan Joby and Highsmith at 75 seems cool to me. Um, Spillane at 70, especially after the, the season he had last year, definitely get it. And then just the, the rest of the roster, is, I, I don't want to say filler guys to be disrespectful, but I mean, definitely not X factors by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so according to MaddenRatings.com, mm-hmm. We're gonna say that's that's a that's a real site. Uh, Cam's rating in Madden twenty three is a ninety four, which I'm all about. I think is well well deserved. Okay. After that last season, still kind of shows that TJ should be higher because TJ and Cam both had phenomenal years, but like TJ was a man amongst boys, and even if Cam was also a man amongst boys. TJ was a bigger man. I like that, though. I don't have any issues with 94. I get the old thing, but, dude, Cam Hayward is just slapping Father Time in the face. Yeah. Yeah, for years now. I don't think that – and I would be really, really shocked if that didn't continue this season. And he has another great year. I just yeah. – like, the, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, you look at all this, though, Miles Jack, I believe he's tied ninth for inside linebackers. Devin Bush dropped down to a 77. Um, kind of expected that to be lower, but I guess you got to give him some. Eh. Larry Ogunjobi, 75. Alex Highsmith, 75. Wormley, 74. 
I mean, you go as far down. I think one thing that stands out to me is the fact that Madden, at least, agrees with the rest of us in the fact that the Steelers outside linebacker group is screwed if they don't add a veteran pass rusher because Jannard Avery is looked upon as a nobody. And it only, I mean, Derek Tushka is a 60, a 60. And, and we're not upset about it. You know, like Derek Tushka is a 60 and we're just like, yeah, you know what? It is what it, it is. is what it is. Yep. Yeah. That's very nerve wracking. Um, I think the overall just story is Madden doesn't expect the Steelers to be very good this season. I totally get that. But I think there's a lot of pieces here that could have a very good year. You know, I think there's a lot of guys on this list that could really show out. Jack, Bush, Ogunjobi, Alex Highsmith, maybe DeMarvin Leal, Buddy Johnson, I expect to have a decent year. There's there's a decent amount of names. Mark Robinson making his way in there at a 64 over Ulysses Gilbert the third. I love that. I love that. I'm all about it. What do yeah, you I'm, think? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the the have you seen the actual like top ten list for the linebackers in Madden twenty three? The inside linebackers? No. Yeah. Yeah. So uh Fred Warner is number ninety one with a ninety four rating, which I I didn't really have a problem with. Like he's a very, very good inside linebacker. Right um, they have Darius Leonard at number five. And then Devin White at number 10 with an 85 what? overall rating. Um, Devin White <laughs> an 85 and Miles Jack is an 82. Uh, Devin White, yeah. <laughs> Devin White's behind Devon J. Campbell and Eric Hendricks. Who's who's one, Who's one? two, three, four? Uh, number two is Demario Davis at 93 overall. And don't be wrong, very good inside linebacker. I don't think... He's the second best inside linebacker in the league. Levante David is number three. Again, solid player, no complaints. Bobby Wagner at number four. Yeah. Great dude. Um, but Roquan Smith is over Micah Parsons. Roquan oh. is number six, and Micah is number seven. And like kind of from there, it gets a little iffy. I would say Micah Parsons should be five. Darius Leonard should be three. Ah. Uh. And then, like, you just mix and match the rest yeah. of them. Devin White right next to Miles Jack's crazy. Wait, so Devin, Devin White's 10, so Miles Jack can't be ninth. He's got to be, like, 12th or something. Yeah, that. yeah, Miles Jack's probably, like, closer to 20 than 10. Yeah. 82 is still not terrible. Devin Bush no, not at all. There. You're going to get Devin Bush in a steal if you're doing, like, a fantasy draft. Easy. Real late. And he's going to have good attributes. Um, here's one. What will, what do you think Minkus is going to be considered to have a down year last year? He should be like a 97, like 96. Yeah. For, but what do you think for how good he is? What was he last year? Do you know? Mm, Good no. old Madden ratings.com. Yeah. I should look up Madden ratings.com. <laughs> I know it's probably up here already. I don't even think, I think these guys got all the scoops. Dude, it is, it is, at least according to MaddenRatings.com. I, again, I don't know if this is real or not. He's an 89. He should be higher. Should definitely be higher. Minka should be a lot higher than 89. The, the way that, that's exactly what I'm saying. So, like, all goes all the way back, full circle, to, t- to TJ Watt. Madden looks at one thing, says, oh, okay, this is how we're going to address this player, addresses them, and doesn't even like doesn't move on until the season starts. This year, the way they addressed Minka is, oh yeah, he had a good end of the year, but a terrible first half. Without anyone recognizing, just like the rest of national media and everybody else, that he had a terrible beginning to the year, which wasn't even terrible. It was just not the greatest because he was trying to do way too much in a different position. It didn't work out. That's exactly what it was. And that's how Madden addresses everything that's why man stinks that's why man stinks True. it's just it is what it is you know 89 there was something up here i wanted to touch on from steelers you before we headed out here um while i find it what do you think kenny pickett and mitchell trubisky are going to be oh geez man um <laughs> let's look them up let's see if madratings.com okay. has them. my my prediction for trubisky will probably be like 
over under 75 i'll probably go under i look at i are we trusting matt are we trusting maddenrankings.com we we are too deep in the podcast not to trust them now well let's just let's look up both let's look up all three of them before i i say this out loud okay still nothing yet okay Oh, okay. So as of right now, Kenny Pickett is yet to be rated. Okay. The Steelers starting quarterback, if it comes down to Mason Rudolph and Mitchell Trubisky, Mm -hmm. has an opportunity to be a 67 or a 62, which is terrible. Yeah. Guess which one's which. Well, with that tone, you're basically telling me No, no, no. There wasn't meant to be any tone. Go ahead. Guess which one's which. (sighs) Rudolph is the 67 and Trubisky is the 62. No, no, all the way around, but still terrible. Still terrible. Kenny Pickett's yet to be ranked 67 is awful. You officially can't play with the Pittsburgh Steelers in Madden at all, unless you're just banking on Kenny being a 75. What would Kenny's (laughs) over under be? You said Mitch is a 75. What do you think Kenny's going to be? He was a first round pick. He's the first quarterback off the board. I, I would hope at least like 70, right? I would hope so. I would hope so. I don't know what like rookie quarterbacks are, you know? Like I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they toss them out there as. The 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 normal like high picks are like low 80s sometimes, like d- depending on the quarterback. It'll be like I'd an 82. See, yeah, but like, like low, could you imagine if they toss Kenny Pickett out there as like an 81? Yeah, people would be that's, really upset. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Like, that's just too much. Oh, no. no don't put it past Madden. Do something <laughs> ridiculous. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it really is true. It really is true. You said running backs drop tomorrow. What do you expect Najee's to be? Ooh, man. What do you expect like Najee's a... weight to be? <laughs> <laughs> Not like Leonard Frenette. Not like Leonard Frenette at all. I know. I loved that. I love that so much. You want to talk about two six? It'd be cool to see Najee like at eighty six or like eighty seven somewhere around there. Because like I, I do feel like he is his rookie year and what he kind of projects to be this year kind of puts him in that like top ten running back conversation. And I, I think um, a couple of weeks ago we might have or may not have talked about it. Um, he was ranked as like like a top ten running back on that like anonymous NFL executive survey. Yep. Do you think? Do you think he lands within the top 10? I think he does. I, th- I think um, Madden loves personalities. And more than anything, Najee has a phenomenal personality. Um, and he, he's just an overall good running back, too. So, No doubt. All right. Before we head out here, Steelers, you tossed this question earlier in the chat. What would your 30-second plea to Madden be for TJ to be over Miles Garrett? This is a good question. It's a difficult question. You're going first. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I would just play them highlights. Uh, maybe like 30 seconds of his Defensive Player of the Year speech. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, it's really all that like needs to be said. Like there, there's if, – if you right now cannot convince Madden that TJ Watt is not better or better than Miles Garrett, they're, 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 you're, you're wasting breath. You, you yeah. are wasting your breath and time trying to show why TJ is better. Yeah, I agree. You you have to just take – you have to tell them to watch more than what is being said. You have to tell them to literally sit down and watch four or five weeks of TJ Watt and say, you're telling me that this isn't the best in the league. He's not Aaron Donald. I get that. But it's just like Aaron Donald. Like you hear that Aaron Donald stories or whatever – and like it's like, oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. But until you literally watch him, you have no idea how good Aaron Donald is. Until you watch TJ Watt, you have no idea how good TJ Watt actually is. And I mean sit there and literally stare at him for 10, 15 plays in a row and say, Holy smokes, this dude is unreal. That's the that's the only way you could go. You could go about any of it I, I would just show them like like a 30 second slideshow of tj just being like 
basically tackled from behind or like fighting through triple teams. And then I would show the the year by year numbers between him and Miles Garrett. It's- yeah, exactly, exactly. You don't know what they'd show you back? Just like two of them standing next to each other, and they'd be like, "Well, well, be well like, he's bigger. He's bigger. <laughs> he, he likes dinosaurs. It's okay. No, Miles Garrett loves dinosaurs. Come on." <laughs> All right, that's how we're ending this. Thank you so much, everybody, for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. Make sure to find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk. Like this video, and as always, go use Steelers20 at Manscaped.com for 20% off, plus free shipping. We'll be back on Thursday. Nobody go by Madden. Enjoy your night. Peace. <laughs>